day. I succeeded. Will be participates also. Yeah. Uh, he's an electrical and computer engineer and a PhD in engineering of the Department of Mechanical Engineering and Aeronautics uh, of University of Patras. He's currently working as a research engineer for the Laboratory of Manufacturing Systems and Automation. LMS. So, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, I will try to present what we developed as a software tool to be able to manage the all-in-one machine. So, machine able to do some additive manufacturing, but also some subtractive action, which is pretty new in, in this type of, of project. Uh, well, I think that's the, the first time we did it, so it's pretty new. Uh, so, I will try to present you the, the tool we implement. I hope it will not be too much boring for you. I will try to be quick. So, of course, first the objective. The idea was to have a software to be able to, to pilot the whole system. By whole system, I mean additive and subtractive uh, subsystem, so some autonomous system able to do the additive without the cable robot, uh, able to do some subtractive action also without cable robot. Uh, the cable robot, while the whole system, to assemble everything and to be able at the end to press on the button and to, to obtain a part. Uh, so we are considering, of course, uh, the end user point of view, but in this development we had also to deal with uh, low level integration and these type of things to be able to get a working system. And my Greek friend Alexios will talk about the optimization of the past planning because it's also something uh, not so easy to do when you want to, to respect the, 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 the constraints of uh, resistance, material resistance, of the structure, etc., etc. So here is the system we have built. So there is a cable robot. As already explained, the cable robot is here to, to follow a path. Uh, and we'll embed the additive, uh, the additive system, so the extruder. And the other system is a subtractive uh, system which is made of a uh, KUKA robot, could be another brand of robot, but it's a KUKA robot and some tool. And the software is supposed to be able to manage uh, the displacement of the cable robot also to start and stop some process with the additive uh, subsystem and the same for subtractive uh, subsystem. And all these things from only one window where you just have to click. We have developed uh, these tools we're using uh, Rhinoceros for, for the, the, the view of the, of the CAD drawing, visualization. We also use another tool called Grasshopper, which uh, allows some parametric design. And it's uh, very useful when you have to, to change some minor things and you want to, well, minor ch things are coming from the, the shape itself, itself, but also from the, the number of points you would like to, to follow, etc., etc. And we also use another, uh, another software called All, All Robotic, which is also a new, uh, new development environment uh, that help us to take into account all the robot constraints, uh, including collision detection, but not only collision detection, also all the geometric and, and, and dynamic models of, uh, of robot to be able to, to pilot it. Well, I do not have so, so much time. I will try to do it quickly. Uh, so we will, we will firstly talk about the additive toolpath software because, of course, we have several modules. Uh, and here we had to take into account some constraints uh, from uh, additive process. The main constraints are the layer height, the, the weight also, the speed of deposition, etc. And on the hardware side, we have to take into account uh, the fact that we are using a cable robot with cable and constraints coming from the cable. Uh, also the size of the printer, uh, well, many things to be able to, to build a shape without breaking it while we are building it. 
So uh, the, 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 the input here where the printer had constraints already taught and also the part geometry. So part geometry is coming from, from the beam from the beam and from the beam we extract the CAD drawing in STL format or other, other format. And then we put all these constraints into uh, the famous LMS DLL developed by LMS. Uh, and from this uh, DLL, we so we 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 give the input, we give the constraints as input, and we will get some list of waypoints we will have to follow later with the robot. I will let the floor to Alexios to explain you how the optimization was made and what is inside the DLL. Hello from my side. So we're going to see the methodology. Sorry. We're going to see the methodology behind the, this algorithm. The ultimate goal is, of course, to optimize the path and be able to simulate. And we have to take into account the geometry itself, constraints that there may be, the machine restrictions, and material restrictions. And then we have to calculate performance indicators, such as building time and energy consumption. This is a schematic diagram slightly more detailed than the one you just saw. So you take the cut out of the beam and other beam information, we slice it and we create alternatives that we have to choose a good one out of them, if not the best one. At the same time, we have to perform some collision check for, for the machine. Once you, you choose the very best of your scenarios, you can visualize it, check whether it is acceptable and then proceed with the fabrication with the building. Uh, you can see that during each step, various inputs uh, and outputs are needed. Uh, for example, when uh, beginning to choose the infill, you have to make some sort of strength analysis. And when you determine the velocities, you need extra information about the machine and the quality and things like that. Uh, first, you, the first step is to choose the orientation, the supports, and these, uh, this is a diagram of what these two affect, mainly the strength. Ma in many cases, the orientation is not a choice because when you build on the spot, uh, it's not a tilt-up methodology or something like that. But of course, uh, it is, the ideal would be to have no supports, if possible. Then we mo move on to discretizing each, the geometry of each layer and we start to create a sequence out of which the points uh, will be given. But in the meantime, you have to choose the infill and there are two options, the infill pattern itself. We'll see how the material itself can help us choose a, an infill and the infill percentage, which has to do with the strength of the part of the final part. So I'm going to skip this and take you directly to an example of how the material affects the, the infill. Uh, you may all know that in edges there is some sort of over deposition. This can be proven, as you can see in this diagram, which forms the mean quantity of material per length over the smoothness of the curve. So we desire not to have edges, we desire to have smooth geometries. And this is an example, a poor depiction of uh, smooth filling that can be used for plain walls. Not com this is not a complex geometry as Javier showed, but we had to begin with something. But this is a depiction of a smooth geometry. At a later stage, you, you have to take into account the dimensions of the nozzle, for example, because everything is finite there, nothing is ideal. And when it comes to the velocity determination, you, the, the easiest thing you can do is formulate empirical tables like this, depending on what your emphasis is on. For example, if you want high speed and low cost or high quality, and then depending on what the material is, you can have barriers, thresholds for the height you can achieve in, the, in a period of time. Then when it comes to building time estimation and energy consumption, you can have profiles on motion, which is pretty straightforward. And the final thing to do is after you have all your alternatives of your path 
and you have uh, compute, you have estimated the performance indicators for each one of them, you can estimate a utility function that will help you choose the best one. So, to sum up, this is each one of the steps we follow, and in between you can see what is needed to pass us information from one stage to another, and also what is needed from exterior information, for example, from BIM or from operators. And this is an example of the sequence, uh, the, more sim this, the simplest of the geometries you can have, and this is the simplest uh, result uh, you can have. And to give you some partial conclusions on the algorithm, uh, the most important uh, out outcome, conclusion, is that you have to keep the human in the loop. There are many difficulties <coughs> in choosing a, a good scenario, for example, the formulation itself, the weighting of the factors to, to retrieve a utility function. Uh, there are theoretical obstacles, especially when it comes to idle times minimization. W we've seen this with many geometries. Uh, the seamless information, this, uh, communication information of information between various steps and the information uh, coming from BIM seems to be very important to boosting the procedure. And finally, we have concluded that the integration of printing mechanism, especially when it comes to high quality parts, is necessary. So that's all from my side, and we'll move on to the subtracted part. Thank you. Not yet. We still have to do something when we have the list of points. So when this uh, first easy part is a shift, uh, then you get a list of points, and you have to, to change this list of points uh, into a tool pass for the cable robot and some action for the, for the additive uh, subsystems. Because you have a list of points describing the shape you want to build, but you don't know where you built it. Uh, you could build it there, or there, or there. If you want to build several, then, then you have to move the robot also. So from the list of points, uh, we take all the geometrical information, uh, characteristic of the different subsystem we have, and we transform it to a real trajectory, G-code generation, but not only G-code generation. We'll see for subtractive that it could be also directly the natural language for the robot uh, used for the robot programming. So uh, from the list of points, we are at the end able to define the J-code that will allow the robot to follow the right path and do the right action at the right moment to be able to build the shape as we wanted. So that's all for the code generation. At the end, from different parts, like the one we have here, you can see that we have defined some trajectories that the robot will follow. And we also have the, the possibility to evaluate the, the liters of concrete we are going to use, also the height, etc. And with the software, as already mentioned, it's parametric design, so you can change many things inside. And uh, if you do not have, uh, for example, for the last one, 61 liter of concrete, you can also uh, try to reduce to change some parameters to be able to build a part with the uh, concrete you have, uh, etc. And now, subtractive tool pass. So, here we have uh, also some constraints. What type of tool we are going to use to do these subtractive actions. If we are doing some milling, some polishing, drilling, these type of things. Uh, and also, like for the additive uh, application, we have to take into account the fact that we are using a cable robot, and on a cable robot, you have some cables. It could be a problem. Uh, and also, we have an ma arm manipulator, and arm manipulator is something not so easy to manage when you want to do some, some, some manufacturing or subtractive uh, actions. So we have to take also into account this type of constraints. Uh, here you have some, some screenshots of what could be the tool for polishing, milling, and uh, also engraving or drilling. Uh, so you can imagine that depending on the tool you are using, you have different positions to take with. And that's part of the constraint I was talking about. Also, we put it in our magical software uh, where we have defined some strategy 
uh, strategies to be able to manage uh, relative position of cable robot, arm manipulators, uh, shape we are working on, etc. Uh, we have implemented also some strategy to create some, some, some patches because uh, one of the constraints of using um, uh, this cable robot or another system also is a, is a weight constraint, for example. Uh, and when you have some weight constraints, it means also that you have to use some small system. So if you have small arms, then you have to move to do some different actions. So we have also implemented the strategy to, to cut the shapes, to, to cut the work we have to do, etc. And we have uh, integrated several, uh, several uh, functionalities and graphing, so you can write something. Uh, meaning, if you want to get flat surface, if you want to, to, to have some sharp, sharp corners also on, on, you, on the final parts, etc. Uh, cutting, uh, some drilling, etc. When you have run this part of the software, then you can get also the trajectory that will be followed. You can see already the results that you will get uh, from, from the constraint you, you put. And then you can simulate it. And simulation is also a very important point because at, at the simulation time, you will be able to detect some collision. Uh, you will be able also to detect some limitation you could have with the robotic arm, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And once you have uh, delete all the problem of uh, collision, of the problem of, uh, of robot uh, kinematic limitation, et cetera, then you can produce uh, the, the code and you can get something to, to, to run with your robot in order to, to get part. And at the end, we are able to polish, we are able to, to mill, we are able to ungraph. Here, uh, well, you will see on a movie that uh, we can write something like Incon, for example, but uh, we are still uh, continuing uh, to do some trials. And now we, are, we will also probably show very soon, yeah, one minute I will, and it's finished. Uh, and we, we, if, if you follow us on YouTube, you will probably also some uh, engravement of pictures and these type of things. So it means that now we are able to do nice things uh, on the concrete. Well, that's all. I do not have to, to conclude because we are still working on it. But uh, if you have some question, maybe we can discuss later. And now I have to finish. Thank you.